following is a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. Hello, everyone. This is Rob Denninger with Comfortably Zoned Radio Network, and I'm here with Jack DeGrone. We're talking Yankees baseball. How are you doing, Jack? Good. How are you today, Robert? Not too bad. I'm uh, just coming off of a little uh, stomach bug or something the past couple of days, so I, I missed out on the Yankee games this week. How they look? Well, they they had an exciting series with the Dodgers over the weekend. They pitched great. They only gave up, uh, I believe, uh, five runs in three games. And uh, they they had a great series against Seattle. They they swept them, and they hit a bunch of home runs. The only uh, down thing uh, being uh, Gio got hurt. Gio Urcella got hurt, and they put him on the – 10 game uh, disable list today and uh, Luke Voigt's coming back so uh, I think it was just a precautionary measure. Yeah because he, he's really had a great season for the Yankees so far but it'd be, it's nice to get uh, Luke Voigt back at first base. Yeah I, I think the thing is you know it's just the safe thing having sit out a few games get get Voigt back in the lineup and then you don't have to make the decisions you know you're going to put LeMayu in or you, you know you're going to put herself on the bench and point. So there's a lot of decisions to be made in the, the last month. And uh, going back to that Dodgers series, James Paxton and uh, Tanaka, they, they've been looking good this uh, past couple of weeks, especially Paxton for the whole month yeah, of August, I mean, really. Yeah. I mean, Pax is, you know, six and all in August and, uh, you know, he had a great start against the Dodgers because the Yankees just got swept by the A's and they, uh, you know, the, the A's have got it down to eight games and the the Rays were playing the uh, the Orioles and it looked like, you know, that could, it could be a five, six game, uh, you know, uh, lead, yeah. but they got it back up to 11. So it's, uh, you know, they're in, they're in good shape now. And Tanaka is, I think he changed the grip on his, uh, his splitter, so that's why he's been a little more successful lately. Yeah, I saw the highlights from the game, and he pitched uh, seven shutout innings, one of his best games to, to date this year. Well, actually, uh, the starting pitch has been coming around pretty well the last 10 days, two weeks, so, uh, you know, hopefully they can uh, keep it up. Yeah, and after they got swept by the A's, I thought, oh, this is a horrible way to start the road trip. But they, they bounced back good, taking two out of three from L.A. and Seattle, sweeping Seattle. Um, they, they they saved it. Yeah, they had a winning record on the trip. And uh, so, uh, you know, things took a turn for the for the better. Yeah, and uh, Sanchez against Seattle was, what, the second fastest player to 100 home runs? Then followed well, by Judge. <laughs> yeah, they 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 both did it. I mean, and when they hit them, they're like rockets out there. And uh, you know, Judge starting to pull the ball to left field, so uh, that's another encouraging thing. Yeah, we can get Judge going. I mean, uh, when he's hitting, the whole lineup seems to be hitting. Yeah, he's really picked it up lately. And uh, the good thing is the Yankees have so many hitters, and even when one or two guys struggle a little bit, there's always somebody around to pick them up. Yeah, and uh, the amazing thing is uh, our leadoff hitter, DJ LeMay, who he has uh, 89 RBIs, which leads the team. Our leadoff hitter is going to have over 100 RBIs and be the team leader in RBIs this year. Yeah, I believe, what is it? He has 23 homers. Yeah. And, 23 uh, homers, Therese? 89. Torres has uh, 33 home runs, which leads the team with 77 RBIs. Offhand, Robert, do you know how many home runs they've hit this year? Ooh, not offhand, but uh, they got to be approaching what the, the season total from last year. Yeah, I mean, I, I would just wonder if they're going to get over 300 home runs uh, this year. I, I know they, they should be close. Yeah, because, uh, I mean, Sanchez has 30, LeMay has 23, and Voight has 19. Down the line, there's a couple guys in the teens with Gardner, Judge, Urshela, Didi, Hicks. So, yeah, you I got know who's, You know who's really been playing outstanding is uh, Mike Ford. Yeah, uh, did they send him down, or is he still on the roster? I believe he's I, – I didn't check what happened today, but I, I believe he's still up. Uh, I mean, he's got a beautiful swing. I mean, yeah. 
when he hits them, they're gone. Not not that this means anything, but I remember I used to go down and watch the Yankees practice, you know, in spring training, and Ford would be out there with Sanchez and Judge and, you know, Hicks and all the big sluckers, and uh, he'd have a better pre- better practice than any of them. He, he used to just crush the ball, and he's continued it in the big leagues. Yeah, because he had, I think, something like 25 home runs with AAA, right? Somewhere in that neighborhood? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. He's right there. I'm trying to bring up this home run total. I think they got 250 on the year so far. Okay, yeah. so they, they 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 got a good shot to get to uh, 500. <laughs> and uh, not 500, 300, uh, 300, <laughs> 300. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if they were playing the Orioles, they might get the five. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I just saw uh, Herman has 17 wins. Um, if he can win his next three starts, he'll be a 20-game winner. Yeah, I mean, you know, everybody's in double figures. I, I think Paxson's got 11 wins, 12 wins. Uh, Hap's got 11 wins. Tanaka's got uh, 10 or 11 wins. So, uh, you know, they've been they've been really picking it up lately. And, and in more news, Robert, I don't know if you heard, uh, Jordan Montgomery's going to pitch tonight in Scranton. And Severino is going to pitch on uh, Sunday in Scranton. Uh, that's a plus, especially Montgomery, because, I mean, for a while there, we didn't hear anything about him. And I thought maybe we, we wouldn't see him until next year, but it'd be a, that'd be a big bonus if we can get him back, too. Yeah, I mean, uh, down here in Tampa, he pitched two innings on, on uh, last Sunday. He didn't give up any runs, and he had, like, two strikeouts. But that was a surprise because, uh, you know, we haven't heard anything about him. And on Tuesday at the uh, – the minor league complex here in uh, Tampa, Severino threw 35 pitches and he pitched a different, uh, you know, a few different batters and he got a simulated game in. So he'll be throwing again on uh, Sunday. Uh, fingers crossed because I would love to get Severino back because we've talked about this before the, with the playoffs. Right now you'd go with three pitches, Herman, Tanaka, and Paxton, and it'd be nice to have Severino in case they want to go to four starters. Well, uh, the good thing, I mean, they're they're pitching with Scranton, and uh, Scranton is tied, and they got four games left in the season. And Trenton, which is the Yankees' double-A team, they're already in the playoffs. So there's there's a possibility that Montgomery will be pitching Wednesday with either Scranton or Trenton, and on Friday, Severino will probably be pitching too. So they'll at least get a couple more starts in the minor leagues. And, you know, if those, any of those teams advance, they could get another start in the minors. If not, they just might come up to the major leagues and, and, you know, continue rehabbing up uh, with the big team. Yeah. And going back to, to Ford, he, he has <clears throat> nine home runs with the Yankees, but if some of those players are, get back healthy, like kicks and Stanton and whatnot, he might not be on the postseason roster, right? You would think. I would guess he he won't be. You know, the, the the Yankees got a lot of decisions, you know, when the postseason comes because as we were talking off air, I mean, Stanton's been hitting on the field and uh, and Carcione has been hitting on the field. And I, I think Hicks is coming along, but there's only 27 games left. So, you know, how many at-bats are they going to get in the big leagues before the you know the playoff starts? Because the way the teams have been playing, I'm happy with the lineup they got now. I know, right? And I mean, Talkman could be one of those odd men out, and he's batting 285 on the year with 12 homers and 45 RBIs, and plays great defense. Yeah, I mean th- that that's the problem because you know how how many bats is Stanton going to get? You only got 27 games left, and you know I'm talking about Hicks too and uh, and Carcio. You only got 27 games left. They're not coming back in the next week. So how many at-bats are they going to have before the playoffs uh, roll around? You know, it might upset the chemistry of the team. I mean, uh, they might only yeah. have 40, 50 at-bats before uh, you get into October. Yeah, and usually it takes, a you know, a good 100 at-bats to really start get going, especially when you've missed as much time as Stanton has. Yeah, I mean, those sluggers, you know, they, they take a while to, you know, to get in yeah. shape. So, you know, that's that's always a, a tough call. And the Yankees, uh, they're looking at their schedule. They're home for a quick six-game um, homestand, and then they're on the road again for 10 games. I think it's 10 games. Yeah, 10 games. 
on the road after yeah. their homestand. Well, they got – out of the 27 games they, la- they got left, they got Boston for four, they got Oakland for three, and then they got two with the Rays, and then like two-thirds of the schedule – or with teams, you know, uh, pretty much playing out the string. So, uh, you know, yeah. hopefully they can, you know, take advantage of that. Yeah, it'd be nice because we start a three-game series tonight with Oakland. It'd be nice to take uh, two out of three from Oakland, considering they swept us the last time we played them. Yeah, I believe the magic number to clinch the division is like 17. You know, Yankee wins or Rays lost, adding up to 17 will, will give the Yankees uh, the division title. Yeah, that'd be uh, nice to see. Tonight we got Sabathia on the mound, and then Herman and Hap. Well, uh, CC, I mean, I think he pitched four innings at last Saturday. Gave up two runs. He pitched pretty well. He looked good. Hopefully, uh, you know, he can he can pick that up because he's pitching against a quality opponent. Yeah, and I, I like to see Hap be a little bit more consistent. He's given up, I think, thirty-two home runs on the season. Well, as, as of right now, I don't think you'll, uh, you know, you won't, you won't see him in the, you know, the, on the playoff, uh, you know, starting the game. You know, there's yeah. time to turn it around, but it, as it looks right now, uh, you know, he, he'll, he'll be an afterthought. Yeah, he's got an ERA over five. Was it five point five seven? That's pretty high for a starter, and he's yeah. given up uh, 142 hits in 134 innings. A lot of hits. Yeah, that's uh, you know that's a tough. Uh, you, you can't really put him in a, in a big game as of right now. Yeah, and looking here, opponents are batting two seventy against him on the year, and I think lefties have actually hit him pretty hard this year too. Yeah, I mean he's got his eleven wins, and but uh, you know after the year he had last year, he's been a you know a bit of a disappointment. He seems to have trouble uh, you know getting out of the first inning. You know, Paxton has yeah. took care of that, but the Hap still has the problem. And uh, Brett Gardner, I see, had a good game the other day. He has uh, 18 home runs on the season. I think that's a career high for him. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I, I guess uh, the Yankees are going to bring him back, uh, you know, next season. I, I had some doubts about him a few months ago, but, uh, yeah. you know, after he got off the disabled list, uh, he really turned it around, and his defense has been outstanding this season. It has, and that's the other thing in, in the playoffs. You want a, a solid outfield as far as defense. Well, yeah, when you when you get in the big games, you really want uh, – you know your defense, uh, your defense first, guys. You know, uh, so I, I think you'll see uh, Brett play a lot in the in the playoffs. Yeah, and and if Judge, he's he's starting to swing the bat real good. Like you said, he's pulling home runs now. He's got his average back up to two seventy seven. Yankee yeah, seems I mean, to go as he does. Yeah, I mean he he's you know he's knocking in runs. He's hitting the ball to left field. You know, for a while there he was having trouble. Uh, hitting the ball to left field and he was hitting a lot of ground balls, but it seems like he's turned it around. And, uh, so that, that's a, that's a good sign to see. And did, uh, did he get hit again? Cause I heard he was hurt, but I see he's in the lineup. Yeah. He got a little injury the other day. He got hit and you know, he, they, they, they took him out of the game for precautionary measures and, uh, you know, it, it, well, since, you know, you told me he's playing the night, so it, obviously it couldn't have been too serious. Yeah, because uh, I saw an article after it happened where Boone says he's really sore and in a lot of pain, and usually that's Yankee talk for he's hurt. So it's nice to see that he's he's in the lineup. Yeah, he he got hurt. I think Maben got hurt too. You know, it's hard to keep track of everything because yeah. they, they drop like flies. So <laughs> they really do. <laughs> I mean, just looking at the. Uh, Stats for the Yankees. I mean, it's a it's a long stack. They've had so many players. Yeah, and I think we forgot to mention. Uh, you know, Batantis is on the way too. Uh, that know, means, he, that's, he that's threw a huge a bullpen, plus for the back end. Yeah, he he threw a bullpen the other day, and I think he faced a few hitters. This might have only been a couple of days ago, so he's on pace. He should, he might get into some games. Uh, you know, next week too. So that's another uh, welcome addition. And um, Zach Britton, he's been pitching good as of late, right? I mean, he's been pretty lights out, at least I've heard. 
Yeah, the the bullpen has been excellent. Actually, they've really uh, you know stepped it up, and which is a good thing to see because I think if you get Severino back, Montgomery and Batances, you might only ask the starters to pitch three or four innings here for some games in the playoffs. So, uh, you know, if, if the starting pitching is st- struggling, you've got a lot of arms that come in uh, that can carry the load. Yeah, especially if you have a healthy Batances and if. Severino comes back, I mean, they could decide to bring him out of the pen, too, if they want to go with just Termon, Tanaka, and Paxton as starters. Yeah, the thing is, you, you, you don't know how many innings Severino will get, Montgomery, Batances. I mean, they might only get 15, 20, 25 innings. So, uh, you know, they, you want to get their pitch count up. But, uh, you know, they got a whole bunch to do it. it. It's almost like, you know, they're going through a, a full spring training now. Yeah. And as, as I mentioned, both uh, Sanchez and Judge were, I think, the second, third fastest players to 100 home runs. Yeah, I wasn't even aware of that. Uh, who was the the other guy? Yeah, you, you, you know offhand. Ah, oh, God, he's on the tip of my tongue. Oh my God, I forget. Yeah, I can't remember right now. But I know Sanchez. I think is the second fastest to 100, and Judge is the third fastest. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I don't have the stats in front of me, but I, I think what Sanchez has only played, he's played less than 300 games, I believe, in his major league career, and, and I think Judge has even less. Yeah, and the weird thing is that I, there was an article about Sanchez this, uh, earlier this week about how he how he just is uh, lackadaisical as a catcher. He just doesn't get baseball. Well, the, the thing is, I mean, you do watch him, and he seems like the, you know, he's almost like he's sluggish. And it was, I think it was more apparent last season, you know, when uh, he really struggled defensively uh, last year. But uh, you know, for the most part, except for the throwing, he's been uh, he's been pretty solid, you know, this year uh, defensively. Yeah, and I think it was uh, Ryan Howard who was the fastest to a hundred. Okay, okay, because yeah. he used to hit bombs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I, I saw a, a thing about Alfonso Soriano, an old Yankee. He hit his 399th and 400th home run off of J off of Hap. Yeah, I, I remember when the, the, he had a big home run in the in the World Series against Arizona. Yeah, which would which would have been the game winner. But you know they they lost the ninth inning. But I remember uh, Soriano was a great hitter. He had great wrist. He wasn't a big guy, but I believe wow. he he had like 410 home home runs for his career. Because I remember the Yankees got him late in his career, and he had a great couple months with him. And then he come to the next spring training, and like he completely lost it that season. You know, and I've also heard offhand now. He lifts a lot of weights because he lives down mm-hmm. here in Tampa. So he lifts a, he lifts a lot of weights. So he looks completely different now than when he played. <laughs> yeah, because he he jumped on the scene with the Yankees. I remember back in the day, and I think he played in Japan before he was in the majors. Something like that. Yeah, I mean the the thing that hurt him besides the home run in I think two thousand and one. Uh, he had a rough playoff. He struck out a lot and stuff. He was, yeah. you know, he was chasing the curveball, but you know, a lot of people do. But he went on to the Cubs, and you know, he really had a, you know, an outstanding career. It looked like he was going to hit five home runs, five hundred home runs for a while. But uh, you know, uh, he he just seemed to lose it like overnight. Yeah, I think he tied Don Mattingly's record for most doubles in a season by a Yankees player. Yeah, I mean, he was terrific, and then he went to the Cubs, and he started. He became an outfielder, but uh, you know, they, they, he he needed some work on his, his defense at second base. I mean, he wasn't bad, but uh, you know, like you see a guy like Cano and like uh, Lemayu now, and you realize, uh, you know, it wasn't uh, it was subpar at best. Yeah, and getting back to today's Yankees. Uh... Yeah, they got a nice lead in, in, in their division, 11 up on the Rays. Red Sox are just the 15 and a half out. But Oakland, who they play this ne- these next three games there, they got the second wild card spot. 
right now it's Cleveland and and uh, Oakland with the two wild cards. Yeah, the, and, the A's have really played great, and I think the Red Sox are trying to sneak back in it. They played pretty well lately, so they got a big series with the Yankees, I, I believe, uh, next week. Yeah, yeah. After they, uh, I think it's after Texas. Yeah, they play Oakland, Texas, and then they start the ten game, ten game, ten game road trip uh, against Boston for Fenway. Yeah, so that'll be a big series for the Red Sox. Hopefully, uh, you know, maybe we'll see Montgomery and Severino in one of those games in relief. Yeah, that'd be nice because right now, I mean, the only two teams challenging for the wild card are uh, Tampa and Boston. Otherwise, it's uh, Oakland and, and Cleveland, or, yeah, Oakland and Cleveland. Yeah, I know Texas fell out of it, and the Angels fell out of it, and, uh, you know, a lot of these teams the Yankees play in September will just be playing out the schedule because, uh, you know, it looked like it was going to be a five- or six-team race, and now there's only, a, you know, a couple teams in it. Yeah, and um, some of the teams, that, you know, the Yankees play Detroit, Toronto, uh, the Angels, and the Rangers. Yeah, those teams have fell fell out of it. So, uh, you know, the Yankees build the record, and hopefully they can get the, you know, the the advantage if they ever if they play the Astros in the uh, you know the playoffs. Yeah, and Astros they they have a a wicked starting rotation. I mean that that could be a really tough series, and a good one too. Yeah. And, and it, you know, it, it doesn't always mean a lot, but I think you would like to have, if you go to seven games, you'd like to have the seventh game at, uh, you know, Yankee Stadium. Yeah, because that last time they met in the, the championship series, it really came down to home field advantage. Yeah, I mean, the Yankees couldn't score no runs down in uh, Houston. I think they only had, yeah. like, four runs, three or four runs in uh, four games. I mean, some, some of the games were close. But yeah. uh, they, they just couldn't hit. Yeah, so, I mean, really, the month of September is just about the Yankees staying healthy and getting healthy. Yeah, I think I think the, the big story is what happens, you know, with the injuries and, and with, the, you know, the pitchers. So if they can get a couple of those pitchers back, that's probably better than any trade they could have got, uh, you know, at the end of July. Yeah. And uh, the MVP for the Yankees this year has got to be DJ LeMayu. I mean, he was a, a great pickup by Cashman. I mean, just unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, you know, we talk about it all the time with, with good reason. I mean, the guy, he hits the ball all over. He's, he's a terrific hitter. He He's an excellent second baseman. He plays well at third, and he even does a good job at first because he's just got the yeah. instinct. I mean, uh, you know, what a player he's been, and actually he's been an outstanding player throughout his career. But you don't hear, you know, you don't hear a lot about the guys because you know he, where he was playing. Yeah, and he's only got seventy three strikeouts, and in today's baseball, I mean that's unheard of for a guy not to have a hundred strikeouts. Yeah, well, he he pretty much goes with the pitch. You know, he'll hit, yeah. he'll hit the ball where it's pitch. He's just not trying to kill the ball, and he's strong enough, and the and the ball t- parks are small enough that he can. Uh, you know, knock the ball out of the park. Yeah, and between him, Urshela, and Torres, the, their infields had a great year st- statistically. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really incredible. You know, you sit down and you look at these stats. I mean, uh, you know, Torres, 33 homers. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's I unbelievable. Mean, I, yeah, I, I considered him like a 20 home run guy, you know, somewhere around there. But 33, I'll take that, you know. Yeah, like I, I've mentioned a couple times, you know, when he was down here in Tampa, they were saying, well, you know, he'll be a 20-plus home run guy. He'll develop into that. And, my God, it only, it only he's only played a few years, and now he's hitting, uh, you know, 30-plus homers. I mean, it's it's incredible, and he's not really that big of a guy. No, and he, he doesn't he doesn't strike out as much as the, the other guys do, and he's batting 287 on the year, um, 77 RBIs, um, takes his walks. And I mean, really, he's gonna—he could—he could be a superstar for years to come. Yeah, I mean that—that that was a great trade. I mean, the Cubs were happy they got the World Series when they got Chapman. But, yeah. uh What you know? What great pickups they—they they got. They got uh, Torres, and they you know they got Clint Frazier, and uh, so. Uh, yeah, and 
You know, Brady. Patrick's made some great – yeah, yeah. he's made some great moves, and I think they'll see uh, Frazier come up uh, sometime in September. Which I would love to see because he's still got the 11th – he still has 11 home runs, which ranks him 11th on the team this season. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that you'll see him come up uh, – you know, it all depends how uh, Scranton, if they advance in the playoffs, it might be. But he could be up as soon as Tuesday or Wednesday, or you might see him. Uh, hopefully, if they win the ser- uh, the playoff series, you might you might not see him till uh, the tenth or the twelfth of September. But I, but I think we'll uh, we'll be seeing him. Yeah, if he if he's not on the major league roster next season, then I think the Yankees gotta gotta trade him at some point. If you're just yeah, pulling talent and- back. Yeah, because it gets to a point where you know you're you're just hurting the guy's career, and yeah. uh, you know that that's not fair to the players, and that's what's going to happen. I think if, you know when you, if you you have a strike coming up, uh, it might be because earlier in their career they don't get no money. I think I've mentioned it, Robert Sanchez, uh, Judge, Andujar, Torres, and Fraser. Combined, they're making like three point one million a year for these yeah. five players. Yeah, I mean, which is a bargain right now. I mean, eventually they're going to start, you know, demanding money or commanding money when they become free agents. Yeah, well, that that's the big bugaboo. You know, they the 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 owners they have, you know, priority over the players earlier in their career. They they lock them in. They you know, they can't get any money. But then they get a when they're ready for free agency, they might get one big thing, and then when it comes up to the early thirty, thirty-one years old, you know the owners get together and they don't want to pay these older guys. So yeah. you know there's got to be a, 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 a equal medium somewhere because uh, the owners are just raking the cash in. Yeah, I mean that's one of the reasons they sent Clinton Frazier down and didn't call him back up because it gave him an extra year of service. It delayed his free agency by another year. Yeah, I just seen uh, yesterday. I, I don't know the Yankees. I think they struck a deal with Disney or somebody. To, they bought back the Yes Network for you know billions and billions of dollars. As I sit here with my eighty-six cent soda, and yeah. you know. <laughs> I don't know. It's all just mind-boggling to me. <laughs> I know it's crazy. Yeah, and but going back or shall I come playoffs? If you have Luke Voigt playing first and Torres playing second and Didi at third, you got to put Lemayo at third, which means their shellos might be right in the pine unless they DH him, and he's had a hell of a season so far. Yeah, I, I think you know uh, you, you got to see how everything plays out. This. Uh, last month but just like what you were saying i don't think uh you know you have to see how Voigt's hitting and uh yeah but as it as it looks now like what we were saying robert i you know i agree with you i think that's the way it's going to be yeah it's going to be interesting to see how things shake out and i mean both in the infield and outfield because like you said their chemistry i mean they're playing really good as a team and you know you start getting these other guys back and could upset the balance in the lineup yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. Hopefully uh, get some of these guys back soon and, and see what they, they can offer, uh, you know, the rest of the season into the postseason. Yeah, and, and going back to the Dodgers series, what did you think of the black uniforms, the white and black uniforms? Well, they were they were pretty lousy, <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, the black, okay, I could deal with the black, but the white uniforms, they were like uh, – then yeah. that was a nightmare. You know, and it was weird because. Go ahead, Robert. Sorry. Uh, I, it was. I saw Didi with a silver bat in one game where he hit the two home runs, and then in the last game against the Dodgers, Tyler Wade was using a silver bat, and they made him go get another one because of the color. I didn't know what was going on. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. It, it was all so ugly. It was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think the Dodgers and the Yankees went to Major League Baseball, and they didn't want it to be scheduled on Players Weekend. Yeah. I, I was hoping, you know, maybe with the tradition of both teams, you know, the Yankees could maybe wear the Highlander uniforms from 1905 or 
1910, and the Dodgers could maybe wear the uniforms they had in Brooklyn, or the Yankees could have the older uniforms. Like if you look at a picture of Larson and Yogi the, night, the last night at Yankee Stadium, they had a different variation of the jersey. It was a little, you know, a little, a little different color. Yeah, because they have, have classic uniforms. Yeah, and then you got the black and white. I mean, you couldn't even pick up the ball sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you know, and the crazy thing is I didn't realize uh, Dodger Stadium is the third oldest stadium in baseball. And it still looks good. Yeah, they uh, well, they take care of that and stuff. And uh, from what I understand, it's, it's, it's still a beautiful ballpark, and they draw their – I don't know, over three million, close to four million every year. So, uh, you know, the, yeah. Dodgers, the Dodgers are a terrific franchise. Yeah, and I, I think I heard somewhere they're spending a, a ton of money to upgrade it too this this off season. Yeah, I, I didn't hear that, but uh, well, it, it's definitely a money maker. Yeah, I think I heard it on the Michael K show that they uh, plan on uh, upgrading it this off season, which, which is great. Cause I mean, behind Fenway and Wrigley, it's the third oldest stadium. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, all, all the old uh, Brooklyn fans, they'll have a lot to say about, about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I still miss the old Yankee stadium. I mean, I'm sure uh, the new stadium is great and wonderful, but something about that old stadium, it just, you felt like you're on top of the field when you're there. Well, the atmosphere was electric and stuff. And, I mean, I go back, Robert, to, you know, the first game I went to was 1964. So I remember the original stadium. Yeah. And, and the thing is, I mean, the park was just, it was massive. You know, it was like 461, the power alleys, and it was just, it was huge. <laughs> At one point, Monument Park was in center field, right? I mean, it was literally on the field, right? Oh, yeah, it was right on the field. And and the thing is, you'd go to a game and you'd get obstructed view seats. <laughs> and you would sit behind one of the girders. And, you know, you'd have to look around, you know, the, all the girders, the whole game. and it, But, it, but it, you know, it added to it. You know, you'd walk yeah. in there. And you'd smell the, you know, it was the smell of peanuts and hot dogs and also urine. <laughs> but then you'd come out and you'd see the grass and it was just, you know, terrific with, you know, Bob Shepard's voice and all the tradition and the history. It was, uh, you know, it was a cathedral. I mean, it, it's, a, it's a damn shame it was uh, torn down for greed. I know. I, I, I still can't believe it. I mean, uh, and during the 70s, they played at Shea for what a season, right? While they, while Steinbrenner had it renovated? They played at Shea in 74 and 75. And okay, yeah. the Yankees actually had a good run one year, and I think it was 74. They had like a two-and-a-half game lead in mid-September, and then the Orioles came in and the Red Sox, and there went the lead in, in the division. But uh, they had a nice run there, but Bobby Mercer had an awful time hitting in Shea Stadium. <laughs> Yeah, I mean Steinbrenner. I still think that might be the deal of the century. Bought them for, bought the Yankees for ten million from CBS, and now they're worth billions. Yeah, I mean they they had something. Uh, I was reading the other day, the the Royals are worth like billions of dollars, and the you know the owner who bought them, I think he got them for ninety six million, and now they're worth billions. It, it's it's just crazy. I mean, it, it really it's is hard for me to even comprehend. <laughs> I know it's like some of these contracts today, and all particularly the NBA, are just mind blowing. I mean, I mean, just I, I can't comprehend it sometimes. You know, the guaranteed money these these guys make. Yeah, it's just uh, it's just amazing. I mean, you can't even. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And the yeah. thing is, you know, it's a shame because uh, it, it's just greed. I mean, uh, you know, the the fans sign uh, side over with the owners. And the owners are making, you know, the money. They're paying these players basically hardly anything when you consider what the owners are making. So yeah, it's and tough season. And I think you'll see a strike uh, a couple of years. Yeah, because with the the analytics now, um, some of these ball players. I mean, you saw this past off season, Machado and Harper. They didn't sign until almost spring training, and some pitchers didn't even sign until well, after the season started. 
Yeah, that's what I was talking about before is, uh, you know, I think all the owners have gotten together and say, you know, we're not going to give out these eight, 10 year contracts, which in that regard, I, I can, I can agree with them. Because, yeah. But, uh, you know, you figure Machado and, and Harper, they would have, that, that, that would have been done by, uh, you know, Christmas because you can sell jerseys for the holidays and stuff. But <laughs> it's dragged on. Yeah, because uh, I remember it was like four years ago, people were talking that Harper would be the first $500 million player. And he, he you know, people were saying he'll get $40 million a year, you know, and he turned out he only got about 30 which is still crazy, you know. But, I mean, it, it seems like the player, you know, the owners, but they don't want to pay. They're going with the numbers now at the analytics. Yeah, I mean, they got the players at the beginning of their contract, and at the end, you know, when the players go for the, the huge salaries, they're not going to pay it. So yeah. there's got to be a happy medium somewhere, and they got to do something, too, about the minor leaguers. they got to give these guys some money because, uh, you know, they're getting taken advantage of. Yeah, it's like, cause that, like in the movie Moneyball, when uh, they had to replace Giambi, you know, the character in the movie is like, we, we can't replace Giambi. We just need to get three players who can, you know, produce the same numbers combined as he did. So, the, you know, the, with the analytics now, they're just looking for the numbers of, you know, what ball players can produce. I mean, it's just, it's getting crazy. Yeah, it just seems to be, uh, you know, the, the college kids seem to be uh, taking over the game, you know, <laughs> the recent graduates with all this analytics. It, it's good in, in some ways, but in some ways you have to, you know, you have to get the old-time baseball guys who just, you know, you look inside the player and uh, yeah. see what they've got in their heart. That's like uh, in that one series, uh, I think it was the champion. It might have been the World Series with David Cohn. And Joe Torrey came out, and he wanted to pull him, but David Cohn convinced him to let him finish the inning. And they asked David Cohn after the game, what did you say to Joe Torrey? And he said, I lied, you know, but he got out of the inning. And, you know, but today they wouldn't allow that. You know, they look at the book, and if they think you're done, they pull you right away regardless. Well, I, you know, in the 64 series, like Bob Gibson and Stolemeyer met three times. And in the seventh game, uh, you know, they couldn't get Gibson out of there in the ninth inning when he gave up two home runs. I think uh, Phil Linz hit one, and I'm not sure who hit the other one. And, uh, you know, the tying run was on first, and uh, Johnny Keene come out, and they said, why didn't you take Gibson out? He said, I have, you know, I have a commitment to his heart. You know, he can, he, he's a battler, and he'll finish the game. But, uh, you know, nowadays they have uh, relievers coming in left and right. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be the way way baseball's working now. If your starter can get you through four innings, maybe five on a good day, then the rest is taken care of by the bullpen. Yeah, that's pretty much the case now. Yeah. Well, with this uh, six game home stand, what are you what are you looking for? Well, I'm just looking for them to win both series, and like the big thing is, I'm I'm anxious to see what happens in uh, Scranton. Yeah. Um, What's their update? They're still in the playoffs, right? They're they're tied. They're tied okay. with four games to go. And Trenton's in the playoffs, so and the Florida State League, they canceled the, the season after last night because uh you know, just to be safe for the you know, the, the hurricane supposed to hit yeah. on Monday or Tuesday, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, um, I'd like to see uh, Herman pick up his 18th win because I'd, I'd really like to see the kid get to 20. He pitches the second game versus Oakland, and then he um, pitches the first game against Boston on their road trip. Yeah, I think they're just going to limit him to the five innings. Yeah, yeah. But he's he's been a surprise, too, among a lot of the other players. Herman, I mean, who would have thought that he'd be leading the Yankees in wins? No, I think with the, the, the beginning of the season, you would have been happy with six or eight wins from him, and he's just, you know, come on with the injuries to Severino and CC being hurt, and you know the starters struggling. He's just been uh, outstanding. Yeah, and he's started 22 games for him this year, and 22 games he's got a uh, 20, he's 17 and three, 20 decisions. So he's either pitching him to a win most of the time, and it seems every three times this year he's only lost. Yeah, he, he's been uh, 
he's been great. He, you know, he's a Cy Young candidate for uh, for sure. Oh yeah, and it'd be nice to see Paxton continue his uh his uh, his streak. I mean, he had a great August, like you said. He was six and zero. I'd like to see him continue to pitch well along with Tanaka. Yeah, so uh, we'll, we'll see how everything plays out. <laughs> Yeah, and this is a this is a big series with Oakland because uh, Oakland swept them, and Oakland is a team they could be seeing in the playoffs. Yeah, Oakland's got a heck of a team. I mean, they got a lot of hitting, and uh, you know the pitching is starting to come around. So uh, they do a great job out there. We mentioned last week. Uh, yeah, you know they're really a special team. Yeah, see, every uh, we mentioned in the second half. I mean, they just seem to come, you know, out blazing. Yeah, this is a big test for the Yankee pitching this weekend. So, uh, you know, it, 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 it'll be an exciting series. This is, the season's just been, uh, you know, a lot of fun to, to watch. And I know today is Friday. I was sick the last couple of days, but next Wednesday? Yeah, like I'm I'm going to head down tonight, Robert. I, you know, watch uh, the USF-Wisconsin uh, game and hope uh, they don't have a monsoon <laughs> because it looks that <laughs> yeah. way now. <laughs> That should be a good game. A lot of people uh, like Wisconsin this year, and, you know, I, I'd like to see that game on TV tonight. Well, they, they, they're they expecting 48,000 people. They don't sell out the upper deck tickets, but they're going to have 48,000 people. And if it starts raining in about 10 minutes, they might have 48 people in there. So <laughs> that, that's, that, that's where I'm heading down now. Yeah, Wisconsin, they're uh, ranked, I think, 19th in the – 19th uh this season so far they're ranked yeah they're ranked 19th yeah i think it's 17 in one poll and 19 in the other yeah so that should be a really good matchup tonight yeah it's on espn i'll, I'll tune in for that one well that that sounds good robert and if if uh you see me wave <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you try to stay uh stay dry because i know some rain will be moving in soon You there, Robert? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, there's some, you know, uh, the Tampa area. Where it doesn't look like it'll be too bad here, but I, I know down by the Miami and, and the, you know, the, the West Coast, they could be getting hurt, hit pretty hard. So just, uh, you know, we'll know more in like 72 hours. But, uh, you know, it's a, it's a terrible thing because, you know, a lot of these cities down here in Florida, one bad storm, and we could be wiped off the map. So yeah, you be safe, and I'll keep an eye out for you tonight. But you know, stay safe with that with that hurricane coming. And I, I, they say it's a Category Three right now. So yeah, well, we'll see how it pans out. Uh, I got seats. We're on the ten yard line, my friend Mike and me. So uh, you know, I'm looking forward to a good night. And I'm looking forward. We'll uh, we'll talk uh, next Wednesday, Robert. Sounds good, Jack. Okay, you take care. I hope you're feeling better. Uh, Thank you. All right, everyone out there, until next week, have a good one. The proceeding has been a Comfortably Zoned Radio Network production. You are hereby advised to keep your humor dry, your dreams wet, your children and grandchildren out of military recruiting stations and off the laps of clerics who wear dresses. Thank you for listening.